It's James here with the Sawyer Family Reviews channel. Today is Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020. This is your weekly comic book pickups video. Every week I pick up my boys, at least one comic each. I pick up my daughter Gracie some as well. And I always pick up my comics at Queen City Comics in Fairfield, Ohio, zip code 45014. If you're in the area and into comics, check out the shop. And while you're over there, check out the toy department. Let's jump in. First off is a back issue. Now, I recently got the Magneto 12-inch figure from Sideshow Collectibles. And I have a collection going of all these comic-style X-Men in separate cases. And behind them in the case, I like to put the character's first appearance, if possible. Um, so far, I've been doing pretty good. i got Wolverine's first appearance, Gambit, Sabretooth. Um, I've got a Weapon X, the first Weapon X behind him. Um, the first Deadpool behind him. But for Magneto, I don't have X-Men issue 1. And I'm not going to have X-Men issue 1 anytime soon. So I tried to pick another issue that I thought was a, a good issue for the character. And in many ways, this issue is probably better than issue X-Men issue 1 for the character. Um, so I chose X-Men issue 150, which is an issue where it's pretty Magneto-centric. He believes he kills Kitty Pride, and he realizes kind of how far he's gone and heads towards being a hero for a while. And it was only 12 bucks, so I thought it would make a cool background for that figure. So there's the first thing. True Believers, we got two of them this week. The other one, I believe, was a Tomb of Dracula issue, so I didn't grab it. Boys don't have a lot of interest in that. So I grabbed this one. True Believers are $1 reprints of classic Marvel tales that tie into something that's currently going on. In this case, it's Criminally Insane, which I believe ties into the Ruins of Ravencroft miniseries. And each of these, instead of saying the title of the original issue it reprints, it focuses on the villain that's in the issue it reprints, in this case, Purple Man. So we've got Daredevil issue 4 reprinted here by Stan Lee and Joe Orlando. Yellow costume is awesome. I love yellow costume. Uh, yeah, so the Purple Man... He's been in a few things. You know, for being kind of a, a lesser-known villain, he appeared on the original X-Men animated series, he appeared on Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and he was the main antagonist of the um, Jessica Jones Netflix show. So, Purple Man. Uh, next up is a book for Gracie, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, issue number 86. This book has gone to 86 issues. $3.99 by IDW. Let me see if I can get you the creative team real quick here. There we go. Jeremy Whiteley, Whitley, whatever, Kate Sharon. Uh, we've been playing a lot of the My Little Pony game on her Amazon Kids tablet. So she's been on My Little Pony mood. So this will be fun. You know, it's, if, you, if you've ever watched the My Little Pony show, if your child watches the My Little Pony show, they would enjoy this book. It's very much in the same vein of the, as the cartoon was. Okay, next up, Conan Serpent War number four. This is for Blaze. This is $4.99. It's the most expensive regular comic in the stack. I don't know why this book is $4.99. should be $3.99. We've got Jim Zub and Ig Guara on art. And this team's up... I wish it would say. Does it say in here? Yeah. Moon Knight, Solomon Kane, Agnes, and Conan all together in one book. So far, Blaze has seemed to enjoy this. Ooh, I like that art. That's pretty creepy looking. So far, Blaze has seemed to enjoy this. Um... So hopefully that trend has continued. I don't know how many issues this goes for. I don't know if this is a five issue, six issue, four issue. What's going on? But it's Conan. There's a lot of Conan books to choose from. So I kind of like the ones that are just a mini series because like, I feel you can just jump in and just read some Conan for a little while and don't feel like you have to read all those back issues. Um, I also really like Savage Avengers because it's like, here's a little bit of Conan. If you want to have just have a little Conan in your life. Okay. Um, Marauders number six. This is for me. This is one of the 40th anniversary Dark Phoenix Saga covers. There's 12 in all. This one's number four. Cage in the Hellfire Club. Wolverine is set free by newly discovered mutant Kitty Pride. That looks like Alan Davis. You know, but it's probably not Alan Davis. It's probably the guy that's inside the book that it draws very much like Alan Davis. See, now I got to know. Yep, it is Alan Davis. Look at that. Oh, no, it's, it's Excalibur that I'm thinking of. It's Excalibur that I'm thinking of that has the artist that draws kind of like Alan Davis. So that actually was Alan Davis. Hey, look at me. Uh, Jerry Dugan, Matteo Lali, and Mario Del Canino doing the duties on this book. Now, I am a little behind on Marauder still. I am caught up on X-Men, X-Force, uh, New Mutants. I am I'm getting caught up on Marauders currently, and I'm, I, haven't, I haven't done anything with uh, Fallen Angels, and I'm almost caught up on Excalibur. So I'm getting there. 
Uh, Marauders is the tale, uh, is the book that focuses on the team that goes out on the ships for mutants that can't, aren't allowed to access the Krakoa gates or like their countries are not participating with Krakoa. So that's, that's this team book. And it's, what did I just show you? What am I doing even? Here we go. Hang on. Look out. Look out. Here's the team. Pyro, Iceman, Kate Pride. She's grown up now. Lockheed, Bishop, Shinobi Shaw, Storm, Sebastian Shaw. So Shinobi Shaw was, was I think, resurrected in issue three. And he's kind of, at least we're up to where I'm reading, Sebastian Shaw was grooming him to be the uh, Red the red King. But instead he became the Red Bishop, if I'm not mistaken. At that point when I was reading. So it's, it's kind of neat. It's not one of my favorite of the new X books. But I like kind of the intrigue amongst the characters. The one gripe I have is it's a kind of jokey book. Like a lot of the characters are being humorous all the time. And that gets a little annoying to me. Um, you know, I, I like some humor sprinkled in a book, but when it's like, oh, they're always trying to fit in a joke, it gets kind of old to me. So, um, my favorite book is X-Force. That is my favorite of the bunch right now, followed by X-Men or maybe New Mutants. The thing I don't like about New Mutants, though, was those two fill-in issues, where it was like, took you right out of the Shi'ar story that was going on with the regular New Mutants for, like, the newer characters. I didn't think that... Anyway, Excalibur number six. Those books aren't out today. What am I talking about them for? Now, Keaton gets this one, so I got the Dark Phoenix variant cover, and he got the regular cover. I am, like I said, I'm still behind on this one, so I don't really know a lot that's going on. Uh, this one does a lot with more, like, magic-type stuff, with Betsy Braddock becoming Captain Britain, and Rogue at one point was in, like, this kind of coma thing. We got Tinny Howard on writing, and Marcus Two on art. This one also has Gambit and Rogue, so that's that's something big for me. I've always loved Gambit and Rogue, so that's that's appealing to me, and the art is nice. I do like the art. Um, yeah. So, and then the number one book for the day, in my opinion, the most exciting, is Ghostbusters Year One by IDW. $3.99, by Eric Burnham and Danny Shoning, the long collaborated, the long collaborating team on the Ghostbusters books from IDW, and they're always fun. They're always, always fun. So year one is like the first year for each of the characters, it looks like. Oh man. So those were the connecting covers. Boo. Boo. I kind of thought this was going to be the connecting cover, but I guess it isn't. I guess this is the connecting cover. So I'm going to keep this one, and I'm going to give these to the boys. That's what I'm going to do. So I got three of these, one for me and one for each of the, the my sons, because they all really enjoy the Ghostbusters book, too. Um, I love when Danny Schoening does the art. Look at that, Lewis. Man, this is so good. So this one is Lewis uh, uh, Winston's first bust. So that's something we didn't get to see in the movie itself. But this is Winston's first time out. Looks like Ray is going to be the next issue. Uh, what was that? Was that... Okay, so that cover probably does not connect. But, so we got it, one cover that focuses on just his character. Look at that. My favorite ghost. That's my favorite ghost in the Ghostbuster movie. The first one. Um, super, super excited to read this book. I can't wait. And then lastly, we got another trade, another X-Men Milestones. This one is Onslaught. And it is retailing at $39.99 and collects a bunch of stuff. X-Men 333 through 337. That's uncanny. Then regular X-Men 53 through 57, Onslaught X-Men, Marvel Universe, Epilogue Avengers 401. Um, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Onslaught X-Men, Marvel Universe, and Epilogue, Avengers 401, Fantastic Four 415, Wolverine 104, and Cable 35. Now, I have all the individual Onslaught trades where it was like the complete Onslaught epic. I want to say that was like five volumes. So I can't see how everything is in here but maybe just the meat of the story is in here. Now, Onslaught was uh, was probably one of the last X-Men crossovers that I was really, really into. Um, it, From an X-Men standpoint, it was a very interesting story, especially Onslaught, which, spoiler warning, I mean, the story's way old now, but Onslaught himself, the character, spun out of um, when Magneto mind-wiped or, I'm sorry, Professor X mind wiped Magneto and kind of took his consciousness in and it became its own thing. Like, the mix of Magneto and Professor X became the villain Onslaught. 
And this is a way for Marvel because the regular comics for like Captain America, Iron Man, Avengers, you got to remember this is all time before the Marvel movies. All those books were so down in sales. They were like not doing anything. So this was an event that was created to kind of wipe that clean, uh, kind of reboot that part of the Marvel Universe and let creators they hired from Image, the Image guys they brought back, Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee, to kind of reinvigorate those characters. So the Onslaught story was an X-Men story at first, but then it kind of spins into the whole Marvel Universe when everybody has to team up to take on Onslaught and it was a way of kind of getting rid of those characters for a while, um, doing the Heroes Reborn storylines and separated them out from the Marvel Universe. So, this is fun. Fun read. Okay, so for today, Ghostbusters is the highlight. I cannot wait. Super excited to add that behind the Magneto. Um, you know, everything else is kind of, okay, all right. But man, cannot wait to read Ghostbusters. Uh, what'd you guys pick up today? Leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the videos, click like, notify, subscribe. Um, yeah, so see you guys next time.